So we're here with ALM, at Superbooth, <laughs> out of the sampler and into the real world. Yeah. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah, good, good, thanks, been busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Can I just turn this down a smidge? Um, done something that I think has been waiting to happen for a long time, syncing DJ gear with your ORAC. Maybe start there, is it Pamela's Discotech, yeah, does yeah, that we say? Can, we, can, we can start with that. So we've got uh, Pamela's Discotech, which is a standalone, it's not It's not a Euro rod module, it's standalone, USB-C powered, um, Ethernet connection which plugs into um, Pioneer DJ equipment. That I have take like it that Ethernet connection is just how that whole architecture works yeah, between yeah, the two? Yeah, they, they, all, they all link and they, and they send uh, kind of tempo information which this basically just listens to okay. and then converts it into um, an analog clock basically, a Dinsync style clock which you can patch straight into PAM but then also like a regular, just times one clock, a bar clock, which gives you a trigger on every bar. And then you also get like a, a MIDI um, DIN clock out. And yeah. it gives out a MIDI uh, clock on the USB as well, if it's powered by a computer or like an iPad Pro. So which way is the clocking? Is it Pioneer clocking the Euro? It's clocking the Euro. So at the moment, the uh, Pioneer is just queued up and you'll see this was just running by itself. But if I hit play on this, in a different bank, but maybe we'll get a bit of 727 on top of that. And then you can of course do... And it'll stop back into sync. Okay, but just really simple... Well, it becomes an elegant, easy solution for keeping all this in sync. Yeah. And I think it opens up your rack to a kind of world of performance and well, just a whole different culture of music. It's maybe not been oh, yeah, used with definitely, definitely. No, that was the idea as well. Um, sort of friends like uh, Jack Mumdance has been on to me for ages for sort of figuring out some sort of solution so he can use his modular when he plays live without spending all his time worrying about keeping the thing in sync. Yeah, or having to go down to bringing a laptop out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Which people are definitely wanting to stay away from. Yeah, yeah. And this, you know, sort of hopefully really sort of opens that up. So what we're looking at system-wise, is this going to be a system? Yes. I'd love it to be. Yes. Yeah, no, this is the, the plan with this. This is the same system I had last year, basically, the grey system. Um, the plan is later this year this would ship as a complete system with a sample and it will be in the grey with the um, cyan coloured knobs and whatnot. Uh, so with modules that we've seen, Pamela's new workout, yeah, yeah. I'll link my video on that if people want to see it. Yeah. We've got the MCO, filter, VCAs, really capable, interesting envelope modulation. And is it eight channels of sampling? Yeah, eight channels of sampling, uh, of sampling both audio and CV, 11 seconds per um, channel on a RAM, so very sort of low latency. But then uh, you can load and save to a USB as regular WAV files, but they're saved in kind of like a, a, in banks of eight, but just in like a kind of simple directory format, just regular WAV files. And then obviously as well as um, it's got, it samples in as well, obviously, and it'll sample both audio and CV. Uh, CD quality, you know, 44, 16 bit. So what, from a from a kind of design perspective, what did you want out of a sample? I love the name, the squid yeah. sample. <laughs> yeah, the name took ages. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, multi-channel sampler, it seems very performance oriented. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I wanted to, um, I wanted to do a, 
I wanted to do a sampler. I've wanted to do a sampler for a long time. Um, I'd seen other people doing samplers, which, which, which sort of put me off the idea, but no one had done anything that uh, felt, very, felt immediate or hands-on and also very patchable. One of the things that this is good at is um, you, can, you can send triggers into it so it starts sampling. You know, you can change, you can patch in the destination, that kind of thing. Uh, and also... Uh, and also the ability to sample and playback CV. So it was kind of like a sampler really sort of designed for modular, yeah. but taking a lot of influence from the kind of early uh, kind of rack mount samplers. Yeah. So how many outs is it? Are we getting some mix of these samples? Or? Uh, we're just using the mix out at the moment, but there's four, there's four separate outputs. So yeah. you get two, two channels per output. Yeah, so I was thinking you might want a stereo kind of mix of, or two outs for your yeah, drums, yeah. one shots, loops, and CV. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Like you're slightly limited in that you you got to use two per output. But I've tried to get a good balance between kind of cost, features, and size. You know, I didn't want something completely massive. Eight in to, to trigger eight parts and eight outs. You'd only need an eight-channel mixer anyway. Yeah, I'd, I'd, you'd yeah, want it yeah, to mix. Yeah, yeah. And I, but it's just the, the option to have CV mix and audio mix separately, or do things in stereo. Does it have kind of? Is the mixing built in? Basic level pan, oh, yeah, yeah, pitch yeah. So shift. Every, so the so the also it's with a UI is it's very similar to Pamela, but I kind of made it more hands on so it would work more for kind of like live use, which is something Pamela isn't great at. But it was never sort of designed for kind of live use. Whilst with this, it had follows a similar. Um, a similar kind of setup where you cycle through your 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 outputs, or whether this is essentially the input to each channel, and then you can change parameters on each one. But rather than going down, pushing the knob and going down this, you've just got direct uh, access. So, you know, I can change like the level nice and quickly, or you know, this is essentially the mix per sample. You know, I can add a simple envelope to each sample, change like the bit depth, crush it, uh, change um, the speed, or on these last three channels, they have uh, voltage per octave inputs and and dedicated controls. You can change all the cue points. Uh, you know, like very sort of basic, simple waveform editing. Can you get really tight start and end loop points. Little kind of little granular yeah. loop stuff. You you can, but you know, it's a tiny screen. I didn't want to sort of take like a door app. And, no. you know, um, it's it, like it's doable on the it's doable, but it's not kind of like ideal. I wanted this more to be, I didn't want you to worry about start and end points. You know, like the way that it's set up for sampling, it, it, it works out for you. You know, it sends a trigger out when it starts sampling, so you can patch that into a drum machine and then just bring the output okay. straight out. And then it knows it has an envelope follower, so it'll automatically stop the sample. That's, so it's just there, it's already it's done. It's taken care of, yeah. well, yeah. the kind of dogged legwork of yeah. other machines. I can show you, I can do a quick, um, I've got like a, a little sample set up here, just uh, kind of a bit, an oscillator through a filter and a simple decay envelope. And I will, I'll just stop this and then I'll, um, I'll select the channel that I want it to go in. So I'll go into number eight. I've got a trigger coming out here. Then I'll take the input in here I can turn monitoring on so I can hear it. Let's just make that a little bit more. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I turn monitoring off. I can start that playing again, and then I arm the sampler. I press record, and then I've got it. And then I can just see it's yeah, super quick. Yeah, and it's all happening while it's playing, and I could patch that. I could that whole sampling process could be completely automated. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you could have a lot of longer synth patterns going around, and every I don't know yeah, yeah, four exactly. bars exactly. queuing a new recorded sound. And then yeah, exactly. And I, like I'm pitching, I'm pitching that sample. I could uh, like loop it backwards and forwards. Sort of change the uh, loop point. Super quick. Yeah, yeah. And fun, you know, and like uh, sort of happy kind of accidents, you know, kind of, oh, you know, that sounds good. I didn't expect that. Yeah. And it's hard to escape, well, the table full of gear, but big boy format, or slightly bigger format, some Buchler. Um, I saw the little tease. It was the font that did it. Yeah. I was, and the banana. I was like, ooh, what's this? Yeah, I put a little tease on the Instagram about it. This was like a bit of fun 
that I kind of made primarily for myself and also I wanted to like uh, with Bamla it's kind of full there's no space on it for me to add any new features um, so I know there were some things I wanted, still wanted to play with that I would like Pamela to do like having quantizers on the output that kind of thing um, I have like a small booklet system so I thought oh why not you know I make a booklet Pam that'll be fun uh, it's got 12 outputs rather than the regular eight, although four are uh, trigger only, and it's got four CV inputs rather than the two. Uh, much bigger screen, but it's all uh, kind of the same. It, this, this display is actually a lot higher resolution and stuff, but it looked, just looked good blown up, the, yeah, of course. the ready one. It looked, I was sort of pleased with that. Um, and it's, much, it's got a much more high-end CPU in it, much faster. I can do a lot more with it, but I just unfortunately have another chance to add any kind of like new features. But it's you know it's working. If I start it going, I think it's bringing a lot to the the kind of bookler world, though. Yeah, like it would like you know that's why I wanted it because it was like oh I'd love you know it gives me it'd be really useful in bookler. And I'm just I don't know whether sort of waiting to see what sort of feedback I get on it, and maybe I'll do a small run of them. I don't know. See what sort of feedback I get basically. Yeah. So standard kind of trade show kind of questions, uh, maybe starting with the booklet, you've just said you're going to get general feedback, see, yeah, yeah. kind of play that by yeah. ear for now. Yeah, that might be a little way off though, that might be like end of the year, beginning of next, you know. So what yeah. about the sampler, how far off is the, the sampler? sampler? The sampler is in manufacture, assuming no big problems, it will ship next month, but probably mid, late next month. Yeah, so soon. And what yeah, kind of price? Yeah. Uh, the price I'm aiming for in the UK retail price will be 399 Okay. And the system? I love the idea of an ALM system. The system will be later this year. Later this year, fingers crossed. Like, yeah. it's definitely, once the sampler's out, that's kind of the next thing to really focus on beyond the discotheque. But the discotheque is, is pretty much done as well. There's just some, um, it just needs a lot more testing, that's all. And, I, you know, again, later this year. Yeah. Kind of price on Pamela's discotheque? Oh, I don't know. That's yeah, probably sort of between one and two hundred, somewhere around. Then I'm re not sure yet at all on that. I'm really glad you said lots of road testing. So it's yeah. that kind of environment where yeah, just yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, perfect. Definitely. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.